Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. So I thought what I'd do today is, is just talk about the color wheel a little more, answer some of your questions, and give you a little bit more detail and some ideas of what you can do with this. One of them being um, that this is made of your own colors. And you saw me in that video. I'll link to it again in the description if you haven't seen it. And it'll be up there in the, in the little card links. But one of the things that I, I did was have you build one from your own colors. The purpose of that was just so you would familiarize yourself with the colors you have. Now obviously, if you have a lot of colors, you don't have all your colors in this color wheel. So one of the things you can do, you say, okay, well, I've got this cobalt violet here. And I want to know, you know, what's a good complement for that? And where does that fit in on the color wheel? Now remember these little color viewers? I'll link to that episode also where I showed you how to make these. This is a great use for that. All right, so there you have cobalt violet. This is a pretty easy one. It's very close to this ultramarine violet, which I used in the wheel. Now I would say though, as I look, it's probably difficult to tell on camera. It's a little more red. It's not as red as quinacridone violet. It's a little redder than ultramarine violet. So I would slide it just over here. That's going to put its complement right up here in the yellow, almost slightly yellow green category. But it's also helpful to know, hey, this is warmer. I have ultramarine violet. Now I know where it fits in here. Let's look at one, one more just to give you the idea. This is nickel azo yellow. Seems to fit just over slightly this way. I ended up using Indian yellow here. So this is not as orange as Indian yellow but it's a little hotter than Hansa yellow. And so this is another thing you can use these cards for. And you can go through your entire collection of paints and categorize them that way with the color wheel you made. Worthwhile to do, especially when you're getting ready to do a painting, you can do it with the, the certain colors that you have. For instance, you know, maybe you've been painting and you have a lot of cerulean blue or ultramarine blue in your painting and you want to know what's warmer or cooler well this is how you find out not just with paints out of your tube but with some that you've mixed relationships color relationships is what this is about all right so that brings me to another question that i had from you viewers what constitutes warm and cool colors so i'm going to turn the color wheel this way about 45 degrees and i'm going to draw a line right about here right through the middle of my color wheel Now, roughly, this is what divides warm and cool colors. I'm going to write warm over here and cool over here. And it's about what you would think. Colors that are bluer or colder, colors that are yellower, redder, or hotter. And that's roughly how they're categorized. Now, in reality, it's gradual. What I would do is I would consider blue, your, almost your true blue, or somewhere in this category, I would consider that cold, your coldest. And around orange, red, orange, yellow, I would consider that hot, your hottest colors. Now, this is not scientific. This has nothing to do with real temperature. It's just a way of categorizing your paints. So the reason I use those two reference points is as you're painting along let's say you're painting let's go back to my swatch card you're painting and i've got this ultra i've got this cobalt violet right here uh, and i want to i want to warm the mixture up well what do i do well obviously i go this way i would add if i wanted to go a little warmer i might add this violet here if i wanted to go a lot warmer i might add this or this now, I have to be careful not to get the opposite side or I start neutralizing the color. But as I get go this way, I would be warming the color up. Okay? And it works in reverse. Let's say I'm painting with the Hansi yellow or this Indian yellow or this Nicolazzo yellow that's close to an Indian yellow. And I wanted to cool that down a little bit. Well, I go this way. 
add some green so maybe some phthalo green maybe some permanent green light maybe you know a yellow green and i start bringing that yellow towards the cool side now warm and cool doesn't really help you a lot in in your painting except that there are certain things you know are usually warm or cool i usually think of most light uh, like light hitting on the highlights in the face or on a building are usually going to fall in a pale shade of one of these colors up here. Shadows tend to be down in this range, depending on whether you're talking about trees or buildings. You know, facial shadows are usually over here in this, this purple range. They might even creep down towards the blue. Tree shadows obviously are going to be in here. And they might be very neutral versions of this, very muted. But shade, shadows tend to be cool. Light, sun, highlights, brighter areas that contrast with shadows tend to be in this area, in the warm. Another thing that, that warm and cool is good for, just as an example, and I'll probably do a whole episode on this one day, is aerial perspective. Aerial perspective is showing distance by way of color and intensity. Now, let's see if I can just show you on this little swatch card. So if you're doing a landscape, for instance, the closer the colors are to you in a landscape, usually the warmer and more intense they are. As they go further off into the distance, they get cooler and less intense until your most distant hills are usually almost always blue. If you ever look at landscapes or hills or mountains in the distance are almost always bluish shades and the colors are usually less intense they also decrease in contrast so that's just another i've just barely touched on that we'll probably get into that in in an episode but that's just another thing you can think of when you look at warm and cool colors so as you go this way on the color wheel you get warmer as you go this way on the color wheel you get cooler okay now finally what i wanted to add some clarification to is i mentioned in mixing complements that you can do or make a lot of really great browns with complements and it's true but let's be a little more specific that about that i think the best colors to use for mixing browns are these start with those this range uh, for your base and then mix the complement to those colors or slightly off complement that'll usually make it a little browner a little less gray so let's say we're going to do this and this is indian yellow what i'm going to do is come over here and mix that with an ultramarine violet probably want more of the indian yellow what i'm going to do is just dab in the ultramarine violet until I get the brown that I'm looking for. Pretty nice. That's kind of an ochre color. Nice transparent ochre color. Add a little more violet yet. Keep going. Now we're starting to get grayer. It's kind of a yellowish umber color. And you can shift that a little more over here to the quinacridone violet. And you'll get different results yet. Let's go down here to the Scarlet Pyrrole, which is an orange-red, and see what kind of a brown we can get from that. And as I mentioned in my complement mixing video, there's just an infinite number of possibilities, practically. So I've got Sky Scarlet Pyrrole here, and I'm going to put a little bit of Thalo Green over here. So that's this and this. I'm going straight across the wheel. Although I may add a little yellow. Ooh, boy, I barely touched the green into that. And let's see what I got. Pretty nice little red brown there. Okay. I'm not going to add any more green. Let's add a little yellow. I mix these two colors. Now I'm adding a little yellow, so I'm pushing it this way. A little more off complement. So it should get just a little browner. 
Ooh, that's pretty. It's a nice brown. Push it a little more yellow yet. That's kind of a burnt sienna color, I think. So that's a little more detail on mixing browns with your complements or off complements. Start with one of the yellow or orangish colors, then go off complement. Start pushing it to the warm side. And each one of these you do, you'll get a different result in terms of your brown. You can get really neat colors. Well, I hope that was a help, everybody. Maybe give you a little bit more input in how to use your color wheel, how to classify your colors, what colors constitute warm and cold, and how you can better use the wheel for determining how to mix great browns. If you have any questions, just put them down in the description. Be glad to talk about it or share your experiences that might help other viewers on here. Thanks so much, everybody.